If you've been struggling with hard mode Warcath, you've come to the right place. I've done some cooking and here are what I believe to be the easiest, most low input, simple methods to get yourself some kills. The first thing we're gonna do is look at a revolution setup where we're actually able to cruise our way to a hard mode Warcath kill without doing a whole lot of the mechanics and while using no food. But after that, we're also gonna get some slightly faster kills with a little bit more manual input. First things first, let's get into the setup. First off, for familiars and auras, I'm using a Hellhound and the Aegis Aura. If you don't have the Aegis Aura, Vampirism works, Supreme Invigorate works, Majorat works, and a Dark Magic are all going to be good options. For familiars, I'm using a Hellhound because the Blood Reaver is extremely expensive, especially with the scrolls, and it's going to cost you millions of coins every hour, especially when you're learning a boss and you may not get kills on the very first go. We're not going to be doing that. Eventually, if you want to swap to Reaver, it is slightly better, but for the price point, Hellhound is absolutely the way to go. I'm wearing the tier 90 Necromancy armor as well as the tier 90 Necromancy weapons just to keep things simple but of course if you have the tier 95 that is gonna be better when you're first learning this boss though between the two different types of tier 90 necromancy gear i'd recommend the tank gear over the power gear in my quiver slot i've got the necromancy nexus which is a necromancy rune pouch that'll hold all of your runes as well as your ectoplasm and if you've got the requirements for workath well you've also got the requirements to make this thing in about 30 seconds in my ring slot i've got the reaver's ring because that is the best ring you could bring to workath and then in my cape slot i am using a zuck cape if you don't have one i've got an easy guide on how to get one with necromancy but if you don't have one and you want to get some kills at forecath it'll still be fine in my pocket slot i'm using a jazz book and in my next slot extremely importantly i am using a salve amulet e Warcath is classed as undead, so you're going to get an additional 20% damage and accuracy if you're using the Salve Amulet, which is an absolute no-brainer. My invent is very standard. I've got some kind of Overload, some kind of Adrenaline Potion, I've got some kind of Prayer Restoring Potion, and then I've got a mix of Blue Blubber Jellyfish and Sourd Omen Brews. I've got a Rune Pouch with all the runes for Prism of Restoration, which is going to be dropped periodically on the floor to keep my Hellhound nice and healthy, and then I've got Vulnerability Bombs. The last three items in my invent are extremely optional. I've got an Amulet of Souls to swap to for the fourth phase if you want one, because after Vorkath dies, Zemmer Eagle is not classed as undead, so you can take off the Salve Amulet. I've got a Vitality Power Burst, which can be useful in a couple different points. And then last but not least, I've got my Enhanced Excalibur. The one other really important buff I have is the Powder of Protection. It's not the Powder of Item Protection, which is blue, it's the Powder of Protection, which is the green one. And what that will do is even while I've got my Salve Amulet on, it'll effectively act as though I'm wearing an Amulet of Souls with regard to the additional damage reduction. This doesn't stack with the Amulet of Souls, but it will give me some extra damage reduction while I'm on the Salve Amulet. Now that we've covered the gear, let's talk about the Revo Bar, and then we'll get into the boss fight. This Revo Bar is extremely standard, but I've made a couple modifications to it just to make the sustain a little bit better at this boss fight. We're going to start with Conjure Undead Army, and then I've got Command Ghost, and then Command Skeleton. You want to leave these as your first three parts of Revo Bar, and then after that, I've actually got the Reflect ability. Reflect will reduce the damage you take by 50% for 10 seconds, so it's extremely handy to have, and we're going to be running that throughout the entire boss fight. After that, we've got our standard stack builders. So we've got our Touch of Death, as well as our Soul Sap. Following that, I've got the Devotion ability, and then I've got Blood Siphon in to the Necromancy auto attack. Blood Siphon can be extremely nice because this boss fight has a lot of different minions, and when it goes off at a good time, it'll actually pretty much heal you up to full. So it's a nice ability to have, even though the damage on it isn't the best. As for manual inputs, we're going to keep it really simple. Whenever I have six or more Necrosis stacks, I will be using Finger of Death. Whenever I feel like it, I'm going to be using Death Skulls. Whenever I have three souls, I'm going to use Volley of Souls. And then last but not least, whenever I've got zero, two, or four Necrosis stacks, and I feel like it, I'm going to use my Death Guard special. With that out of the way, let's get into the fight. Before we get into the video, a quick PSA, which is that if you are watching this video, it is more likely than not that you are not subscribed to this channel. And if you're enjoying the content, there's no reason not to hit that sub button as a way to tell the YouTube algorithm gods that you like what you're seeing and you want to see more. With that out of the way, let's get into it. One important note for my invent is if you're not using an overload salve that has built-in anti-fire protection, I would strongly recommend a super anti-fire. If you don't have one, you are going to become the human torch and not in a good way. Once I'm ready to go in, I'm going to put on Deflect Necromancy, I'm going to make sure I'm potted up, I'm going to make sure I've got the Darkness Incantation active and my God Book is on, and then from there, it's going to be time to go. I'm going to conjure my Undead Army, I'm going to command the Ghost, and then we are going to head into the Vorkath fight. If you want to, you can also apply a Death Mark as you head in, and then as soon as you start attacking the boss, you're going to want to throw a Vulnerability Bomb as well for an additional 10% damage. As for positioning, this is my favorite spot to stand because what's going to happen throughout the fight is Zemmer Eagle is going to spawn in a bunch of minions, and standing here is going to allow a lot of those minions to pretty much die automatically just from your AoE attacks, and that's why Necromancy is such a strong combat style here. And with that out of the way, we're just going to start attacking the boss and whittling away at his 1.5 million life points. Whenever you see a shield around Vorkath, you're going to be dealing reduced damage, and that also means that there is going to be a shield or minion somewhere in the room. 
They can be a little hard to see and also a little hard to click on. But you can see I've marked it on screen. It's pretty much dead center, more or less underneath the shield. Although you could try to find the shielder and then click on it and then attack it and then kill it, there's an even easier way, which is to quite simply click on your special action button and that will do a 10,000 damage hit to everything in the room because the shielders only have 6,000 life points. Just like that, you got the shielder handled. The first mechanic is by far the most important one to pay attention to because it persists throughout the entire fight. So let's get into it. The first thing you're going to notice is that Zemregal has spawned a square cloud right on top of your character. And this is going to be where the spires go. In the normal mode video, we simply stood in one place and tanked this mechanic, but in hard mode, the spire does a lot more damage. So because of that, we're actually going to elect to use the dive ability to get out of the way from it every single time. So this one's really easy. Throughout this entire fight, if you ever see smoke underneath your character, dive outside of the smoke to avoid all damage. And you'll see my character dives and the spires are going to miss me. Now we're going to go back a little bit and we're also going to look at what I did to deal with Vorkath's mechanic because Vorkath is going to be doing a strong magic attack at the exact same time. Whenever Vorkath goes up on his hind legs like this, you're going to get a shockwave attack that's going to deal magic damage and it's going to go from in all the way to out in a large square. And although you could dodge this completely by just running really, really far away and getting out of the entire area, that's not a great way to go about it because later on in the fight, the room is going to be full of poison and acid that you do not want to step in. And just tanking this mechanic is a whole lot safer than moving around or running like a headless chicken. So because of that, we're going to take things really simple. From a positioning standpoint, the only thing that I should be worried about is focusing on getting out of the way from Zemmer Eagle's smoke and that spire attack. So from a movement standpoint, that's all I really have to worry about. And then there's one other additional input that I'm going to make here, which is that whenever that magic attack is in the process of hitting me, all I'm going to do is use the resonance button. Resonance is an awesome ability to use here because in most instances, you're going to be hit three times by magic and resonance is going to heal you just about in full for one of those three hits. So let's say you take in a thousand, you rezo the second a thousand, and then you take a third a thousand. All of a sudden, instead of taking 3,000 damage from this mechanic, you've only taken a total of 1,000 and you haven't had to mess up your positioning at all. All we're going to do is click back on Vorkath and resume attacking. You're going to see that we've got another shielder here, and I'm going to elect to click on it this time because he's right next to me and my ballista is still on cooldown. Then after that, back on Vorkath, and all we're really doing here is spending our stacks as we have them. If you want to use the Living Death Ultimate ability, you're more than welcome to, and you can follow up your Living Death by drinking an Adrenaline Potion just to give your Rebo Bar a little bit extra damage, but it's absolutely unessential, and we're not doing any kind of fancy or special rotation here. It's just we're sitting on 100% Adrenaline, so if you want to ult, you're more than welcome to. We've got the smoke around us, so all I'm going to do is jump out of the way, and we're going to properly dodge that attack. And you're going to notice here that for the majority of this fight, I'm just moving back and forth between the exact same two locations, which makes it extremely simple. There's no crazy movement required, I'm just going to dive to the right and then dive back to the left each time that mechanic happens. And at this point you're going to notice that we've used no food at all and we're actually out of phase one. Same thing where we've got the smoke on the ground, I'm going to dive out of the way and we're going to quite simply continue to attack Vorkath and whittle away at his life points. You'll see right there that I had three souls so I'm just going to eat them and really all it's about is just dealing some sustained damage to the boss so that we can lower him before too long. Vorkath has another shield, so we're going to drop the Ballista one more time, and we're just going to continue to deal damage to the boss. It's worth noting here that even if you don't have a Zuck Cape, it's not a terrible idea to use Death Skulls, because Death Skulls will help clear out some of the minions that have more life points than the Ballista will be able to clear. The next mechanic we're going to see on Phase 2 and onwards is these green poison areas that Vorkath is going to regurgitate and leave on the floor. And the deal with these is pretty simple, just make sure not to stand in them. But because of the method we're using, it shouldn't really come up as an issue at all. It's very unlikely that the poison spawns on you, although it can happen. But because we're just diving back and forth between two areas, all you need to do is just make sure that you look before you dive. Do not dive directly onto the poison, and you've got pretty much nothing to worry about. This poison doesn't do any damage to you or anything as long as you don't stand in it. And as you can see, I'm looking, I'm diving, and we're good to continue attacking the boss and letting our Revo Bar do the vast majority of the work. And now that the boss is right around 750,000 light points, we're actually entering the third and most difficult phase of the boss fight. Now that we're in phase three, there's one important difference, which is that you don't want to just kind of spam your ballista whenever you see a shielder. Instead, you need to be a little bit more careful with when you use it, because there's one mechanic in forecast rotation that requires you to use it at the correct time, or you're going to take a 10,000 damage magic hit. So at the start of phase three, which is at 750,000 light points, do not fire the ballista, hold it instead. Zemregal is going to say cut them down without mercy and it's voiced as well so if you've got your game sounds on, even easier. And then from that point onwards, once Vorkath flies into the air, that is when you want to click on your ballista and fire your special action button. What that's going to do is it's going to shoot Vorkath down onto the floor so that you don't end up taking this massive 10k hit. 
It's worth noting here that if your Ballista is on cooldown and you can't fire it off on time, you can dodge this with Devotion and Magic Prey or with Barricade, but it's extremely cumbersome to do and the magic attack will also one-shot your familiar from full HP. Much easier than that though is just to hold your Ballista during phase three. As soon as you've clicked on your special action button, all you got to do here is just attack Zemmer Regal. He doesn't do a whole lot of damage to you and there's not a whole lot to pay attention to. It's not like a crazy DPS check or a DPS window, but any damage you're able to do here is damage that you will not have to do a little later on in the fight. And just like that, Forkath has rematerialized on the floor and you're going to resume attacking Forkath. I went out of my way to not use food in this kill, but I'm just going to advise to do something that I didn't do here, which is you want to keep your life points at least above eight or 9,000. This is because Zemmer Eagle gained some extra attacks, like being able to use Death Skulls on you during this phase, and your HP can start whittling away a lot faster because of it. In addition, every phase, the base power level of Warcath goes up by 25%, so because of that, now that we're in phase three, we're just gonna be taking a little bit more damage from all sources. So you wanna try to be a little bit careful. We've got one other mechanic in addition to all the previous ones, which is extremely similar to the green poison. It's pink poison. This hits a little bit harder than the green poison and the damage ramps up ever so slightly more, but outside of that, it's exactly the same. It covers an area. You wanna make sure that you do not stand on that area. So it's the same thing as before. Just make sure you're using dive. You wouldn't wanna randomly surge because if you're randomly hitting surge or running around like a headless chicken, well, you're probably gonna perish. You're gonna notice that I fired the ballista one more time here. And the reason for this is that you can use it a couple times between each flight phase without risking it being on cooldown when you need it. This is because Vorkath follows the exact same attack pattern over and over and over again, and you'll get a feel for the timing and what is safe and what isn't. As a rule of thumb though, as long as you don't use it more than twice between flights, you should have it off cooldown for the next flight. So you'll notice that after this point, I'm not going to use it anymore, and I'm going to hold it and let my Ballista come off cooldown, leave it that way until Vorkath flies again. You're also going to notice here that I'm taking lots of damage from Zemmer Eagle, and that's because Zemmer Eagle used Death Skulls on me. When this happens, you kind of have a couple options. The first option would actually be to break the Death Skulls by going too far away, because just like your Death Skulls has a maximum range, Zemmer Eagles does too. But with this Revo Bar and the setup, I elected to stand here and tank it because it's actually not going to do all that much damage to me, and I know that with my Revo Bar, I'm spamming a lot of really strong defensive abilities like Reflect and Devotion, which should nullify a lot of the damage. But that's a really important note and thing to look out for. If you see yourself taking a ton of Necromancy damage back to back to back, it might be a Death Skulls, and that might be a good time to eat some food. Outside of these minor changes though, the Vorkath fight is really nice in the sense that it kind of tacks on one little mechanic at a time, but everything else stays exactly the same. So although the complexity goes up, it doesn't get infinitely harder all at once. There's no crazy choke point phase where the boss fight is all of a sudden way more hectic than it was at any other point. So all we're going to do here is continue whittling away at his life points. And at this point, he's going to fly again in just a little bit. The flight phase is actually kind of nice, because as long as we've got our Ballista available, it's actually a nice place to take a breather, relax, and deal with Zemmer Eagle a little bit. Because Zemmer Eagle doesn't do all that much damage, and he's not terribly scary. At this stage of testing out this bar and this method, I wanted to see if I could do the whole kill with no food. And because of that, my life points do get a little bit low in this section. But if you want to eat just a couple brews and a couple blubbers, you can be chilling on full HP for this entire period of time. Something that's really nice to do after Vorkath drops back down from flying as well is to use Death Skulls, whether you do or don't have a Zut Cape, because it will help clearing out a lot of those minions. In addition to that, as soon as your Ballista is available after that jump phase, you want to continue to use it a couple additional times. As soon as Vorkath dies and it's just Zemmer Eagle, congratulations, you've pretty much sealed the deal on a successful kill. Because at this point, Zemmer Eagle gains no additional mechanics or attacks, you just get to deal with him by himself without Vorkath. So it's a very, very easy boss fight, and you can also spam the Ballista as much as you want, as often as possible, because there's no flying phase to be worried about. At this point, we're going to fast forward a little bit because there's really nothing to this aspect of the fight. He's going to continue using his Spire attack, continue dodging it as before, your Revo Bar will do the rest, and you will smoothly, easily cruise to a successful Vorkath kill in hard mode. Now, this kill is about 7.5 minutes long, which is by no means a fast kill. And because of that, I wanted to talk about what you would do to improve this kill time, because with this exact same setup, I was able to get kills right around the 5 minute mark with a little bit more effort and a little bit more manual input. So let's get into that now. This setup is exactly the same as the last one, but instead of the Revo bar that is awesome for keeping things low input and keeping things nice and easy, we're actually going to be going full manual. Everything else about the setup is exactly the same, but we've managed to take off two and a half minutes from the final kill time just by making that one singular change of going from Revo to a full manual rotation where we're using a lot of thinking and intentionality with our ability rotation. I just posted a full necromancy DPS guide, so I figured it might be time to start including some full manual methods in these talk through videos. 
If you want to check out the guide, it's linked in the description down below. But effectively, all I'm doing differently here is instead of just kind of hitting stuff when I have stacks, I'm actually going to be going through a living death rotation. A living death rotation is pretty simple. All I'm really trying to do is I'm going to cast living death, I'm going to adrenaline potion, and then I'm just trying to cast death skulls as many times as I possibly can. And just in doing that one singular thing, you're going to notice that the boss's HP is dropping significantly faster. Nothing else really changes about the way that I'm dealing with the mechanics. I'm spending my stacks whenever I have them, and I'm building stacks manually as often as I possibly can. This is also going to improve your kill time because there are points where that Revo bar used Blood Siphon, Reflect, or Devotion at times where I maybe didn't exactly need it. And being able to choose when I want to activate them just makes things a little bit faster. But the way that we're dealing with the mechanics is exactly the same as before. I'm not doing anything different with the mechanics themselves. All we're doing here is I'm incorporating a better DPS rotation. The one other difference between this and the revolution method is I'm also using the life transfer incantation to extend my conjures. That's another thing that you can do to increase their damage dealt. The fundamentals in this method stay exactly the same, but it's definitely an opportunity to grow and improve if you've decided after a couple kills with the rebel only method that you want to speed things up just a little bit. It's also not like you have to do this all at once. You can pick up one tip here or one little thing there that will make your kills a little bit smoother and a little bit faster. And just like that, we've got a much faster work F kill with the exact same method as before, just with some slightly better damage. So yeah, that's pretty much the entire method. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like. Feel free to leave a comment as well if you have any questions or there's anything that was unclear in the video. I'm trying to make these videos the best I possibly can, so your feedback really does mean a lot and help me out a lot because I read every single comment. Outside of that, I hope you're all doing well. I will see you all in the next one. Take it easy.